Okay, so this is another one in my series. I'm here in the southern Ecuador. Um, and this one is uh, how, to, how to ride on a long journey, you know, how to, how to get prepared and, and what to do and, and, and getting smart about uh, doing a long trip. Okay, so number one is get prepared. The night before, make sure you've got everything ready. There's nothing worse than having to wake up in the morning and then get everything ready and get on your way because you want to be getting, you want to be leaving at sunrise. Okay, not, not before then, you know, I've done it a couple of times before then and it's pretty dangerous, you know, because other people on the road just think they've, they've got the whole road to themselves, you know. Um, so prepare everything, get all your bags packed, all, all organised. Now when you're packing bags, a really smart thing to do is to, is to make sure that your, um, that you have your bags packed in a way where the things that you're, you're more than likely or could need is easily accessible. I, I have my bags, I've got my camping gear in one bag, um, I've got my camping equipment in one, in one bag, I've got my uh, clothes and uh, my drone in another bag, I've got my um, tools and, and gear in another bag. Um, so I've got two, two, two cases and two bags. And then I've got my tent up on top of my back case, which also houses all my computers and uh, camera equipment. So I've got everything neatly in, in, in place. Okay, so the night before, what you want to do is you want to, um, you, the night before, what you want to do is you make sure everything's charged up. As an example, I've got a drone, and um, if I don't charge the drone, um, and leave it a couple of days, it gets down to about 80%, and then it flies back to home at about 40%, 30%. So you only get about five minutes of flight time, so you've got to make sure they're charged. Cameras, all your phones, everything like that. Another smart thing to do before you leave is to, um, is to make sure that uh, you download the Google, if you're using Google Maps as your navigation, make sure you download the region, because you will lose cell phone coverage, and uh, and then, I mean, if you're just going on the major highways, you can just stick to the highways. But even then, some of them come and become a bit tricky because some of them become dirt, and you're thinking, "Am I on the right road?" And if you got the if you got the sat nav set up correct, if you got your, your map set up correct, you, you won't have a you won't you won't have that nervous problem. Um, so you got everything charged. You got downloaded the maps. You got all your bags packed correctly. Let's talk about the second thing is when you leave. You leave, at, you, you should be ready to go after you've drank your coffee, had your cup of tea or whatever, whatever rocks your boat uh, for, and had some breakfast. Always advise to have something, you know, for breakfast, you know. Um, when you're riding, I don't, I don't suggest that you eat heavy uh, at any stop, you know. I stop a lot and I'll have some, a little bit of meat, which is probably a little bit heavy, but it's protein. So it's not such it's not such a drain with the, like carbs are, and you'll get meat and vegetables and stuff like that, um, uh, or meat and salad. And these are little little uh, like little towns like I'm going through now. You'll see someone just up here. Oh, he's a mechanic, I think. They're called Teller uh, Mechanics or no Body Work. But you know there'll there'll be places all along the side of the road everywhere you go in, in Central and South America where you can get a bite to eat and a quick bite to eat and it's freaking delicious too. So the next thing is, so we've got, what we've got is we've got, um, we've prepared everything, we've got our bags packed correctly, we've got our, we've downloaded the nav, we've got all the things charged, we've had breakfast and we get on the road. Now how far should you ride in a day? I mean I've done 13 hours which I, I think is completely the maximum. I mean, you're sore all over at the end of 13 hours of riding. What you do is you stop every, I, I stop every two hours for 15 minutes, not 30 minutes. 30 minutes would be the maximum I would stop. And that's when, usually it's not my fault. Usually I'm waiting for someone to cook something or, or uh, something's a bit slow. Um, I don't suggest you just stop at gas stations. That, that's your stop because you're basically, most of the time you're sitting on the bike anyway. Uh, and you're off and gone in a few minutes. So that's not really a rest. And it's not, look, the best place to, to stop is you see a good view and it's safe to stop. 
sit down and, and maybe if there's somewhere you can sit down for a minute I mean I like to stand up because I've been sitting down for 15 20 minutes on a you know, two hours sorry on a motorbike but um, you might want to you know and a lot of the times a, a good place to stop is some with some great views are some bus stops uh, some of the bus stops have incredible views and there's usually a little bit of extra area there where you can chuck your bike so and it also depends on the road you're traveling on so I mean this road here I could easily do probably seven eight hundred kilometers on a road like this in a day in 30, 12 13 hours um, but your biggest issue is not you don't you don't like if you go to Google Maps it says four hours fifty minutes that's usually pretty good accurate uh, pretty accurate you usually catch up a bit but the problem is you uh, Central and South America don't have a freight network by rail so everything goes by uh, everything goes by um, truck so you could be um, sat behind you know four or five trucks at any one time today's I'm, I'm, I'm in the middle of nowhere now so there's not many trucks around uh, transporting goods because there's no towns to transport them to but when you go onto them when you when you've got major towns in front of me you'll see trucks everywhere and they can be pretty frustrating but you just got to be patient another thing you'll have uh, you'll have to contend with is staying you, you should all even if you're going to overtake them stay back 50 yards the reason is most of the trucks are not serviced well and the, the shit that they blow out just come straight back at you if you're sitting behind them for five ten minutes you do that 20 30 times a day which you will it's not very good for your health um, so it's not, and if you're going to be riding on dirt I mean dirt roads the maximum I, I, the maximum I've got out of a full day on dirt is around about 270 k's I know I'm a pretty careful driver on dirt I'm not a, I'm not the most experienced off-roader so I take my time I don't try to be a hero because especially if you're traveling on dirt you're gonna have um, if you're traveling on dirt you're gonna have uh, a lot of a lot of times where you need to stop uh, stop off and you really um, you're gonna be in the middle of nowhere more than likely and if something happens to you you know you've got you you're pretty much a goner you know um, I also make sure I don't know I don't know if the camera can show you the back there I've got extra water for when I'm going on uh, off-roading um, see now I'm, I'm sitting too close to this guy even though he's not blowing smoke if he was blowing smoke I'll be way back and I don't care like it's, he's not going to affect me that much you know you, you just take your time and when you get a good yeah, good couple of hundred yards of free space you can you can take them you know I mean with this thing there's a KTM 1290 Super Adventure so I could take him here easy I'm in third and I can just first few seconds are a bit slow and then bang you know um, so what you should do is always plan to 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 be to be a little bit um, uh, a little bit conservative with how far you think you're going to go don't try to be a hero and get on the saddle for 12 13 hours in a day because believe me you're going to be broke the next day and you're only going to want to do one or two hundred k's you know I, I i usually try to get it around the six to eight hours you know between cities um and i try to get even though because i've got to work as long as the internet so when i research hotels i look at uh, people's reviews on wi-fi and stuff like that the hotels will say oh look at that view the hotels will say that they've got high-speed Wi-Fi and I've walked out of a couple because they, they the Wi-Fi was just completely useless and I couldn't even do basic stuff look at those views hey? this is just you're gonna see this everywhere in Central and South America there's only a couple of places that are flat and there's nothing much to see and that's you know a couple of days of riding I mean America's like that South, South of America uh, of the of the main North America South of North America is pretty much flat pretty boring now until you get until you go inland you're not going to get much out of that um, but this is pretty this is this is pretty much the norm that I that I get to see every single day um, so that so that's your that's the distances you should cover if it's a really it's a good flat highway uh, straight you might get a thousand kilometers out of a day you know um, 650 miles Um, if you're if you're um, on a road like this, I don't think you're going to get that. You know what I mean, because you're going to get held up so many times, and you, you have to drive through villages. And I always suggest drive slowly through villages. A couple of things: dogs. Um, dogs will go for you. 
Um, and kids are everywhere and they're walking along the roads and stuff like that and if you're going to get done by the police and believe me you just don't want to be not local police because that you're in for an hour two hours of crap you know that from the i haven't had that experience because i haven't done anything wrong so well not that i haven't done anything wrong but i haven't been caught doing anything wrong but i drive i drive particularly slowly through uh through towns um so i'm driving really slowly today i'm just enjoying my ride you know um so the the other thing is um I had, it, I had it in off-road mode then, my bike, which was not, which I was doing a bit of off-roading about 20 minutes ago. Um, so I switched it back to street. It's a little bit, takes a little bit off the edge of the bike off-road and, and tightens it up a little bit. Um, yeah. So um, yeah, take your time. My, my helmet's just, I just accidentally unleashed, unlocked my helmet. Not clever. I'm going to stop in a sec. Um, yeah, I mean, you're never going to have any problems with fuel. Uh, you know, you, uh, unless you've got a really small tank. And then I, on my right side, on my left side, I've got I've got an extra gallon in there if I ever need it. But I I never need it. Um, but I mean, I probably will once I get Peru, Chile, if I want to go for it. Um, so it's just all about planning and taking your time and just relax. Now, as far as the other thing to do is grab a couple of snacks on your on your on your way. You know, have a, have a couple of snacks handy. So chew bars or some energy bars or something like that. I'm just going to stop here and fix my helmet. Yeah. So, um, you know, just make sure you've got enough water on board. Uh, get a backpack. Uh, you, I've got a climb back climb backpack. Uh, it's excellent. Um, so I suggest you get a backpack with plenty of and, and get a one or two litres of water on board each day. I don't think you're going to have too many problems, but you just want to make sure that uh, you don't have any problems. Hang on a second. And I'm back. Um... Yeah, just making sure you've got plenty of plenty of water on board. I mean, I've got about I've got about a liter in my backpack. Plus, I've got a gallon in the backpack, a back tank here. Um, it just makes a huge difference if you want to stop over and just have something cold. If I'm staying at a hotel or something, they've got, or even a hostel, they sometimes have those ice machines. I chuck a uh, one or two handfuls of ice, and that usually keeps it keeps the water pretty cool for the whole day. Um, the other thing you're going to encounter, see this sign here? They're called topes. Um, speed bumps, speed bumps, whatever. Um, but you, you'll see them, and some of them are just non-existent. They'll actually alert you to them, but then there'll be nothing there. <laughs> so, um, so there, I mean, there's no speed hump here, and it said there's speed humps. So yeah, um, sorry, I had the uh, the other visor up. Um, cornering, long rides. It's just so much fun. I mean, here's a bit slippery here. I've been here before, and I, I, I came through here last night, and that, my back wheel came out a little bit on that spot there. Um, but you got, you got, you just got to be careful, and you always for the, for the long rides in Central and South America. See where the truck is now. I mean, you do it anyway, but you have to do it. This this is your riding spot position pretty much when you're travelling in South America. It's different everywhere else. It's just a, it's just on the right side of the center center line of the of the road. And you always want to, people overtake here, you, 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 you won't believe the risks that people take. And, and I've been on the road now for, for quite a few months and I can tell you right now, I, I think I've seen 10, 10 accidents and I can't tell you which, which I, I can only tell you for sure one of them was a facility, a kid on a motorbike. Um, and probably there's two tr trucks collided head on, so I reckon there's someone, a few dead there. Um, Yesterday there was just coming into town. There was a someone had just smashed into a pole up the road here somewhere uh, Just going too fast tried to overtake and then realized they couldn't overtake Braked heavily lost control went across the road hit her. I don't think they were too badly injured because from what I could see as they hit They weren't going that fast, but I mean I was I was probably about 400 about this far away when I saw it uh, and saw it in the distance um, so you know you just gotta you just gotta be careful and just take your time. 
so he really I really shouldn't overtake this guy here because I'm in a little bit of a town but he is going very slowly so and it's fine to overtake but I just I just take a lot more care in towns that's all see this says the tope and there's no tope just got some lines but believe me there's all different types there's the ripple type there's the uh, there's the um, the smooth you know just get your ass a little bit out of the seat off the off the seat type um, and then you've got some monsters and I've been surprised by a couple of them and really could have damaged the bike um, you'll only get them in towns um, sometimes you get them a little bit out of town like sometimes when there's big long uh, curbs in the road they'll just put them there and it's crazy but um, yeah it's interesting I think I'm in the I think I'm in my town now I'm not sure there's there's two towns that look exactly the same I'm gonna stay on this track though gonna go for a bit of a ride up the hills here and see if I can find another off-road stop for a little while and look on my maps another thing to do too is even if you if you're sticking to the highways you don't need them but I always have a map in my case here um, a road map um, and usually they're pretty darn good you know um, I haven't had too many problems there's only once I went about 60 miles off-road and then I got to a gate at someone's farm and like they obviously no one goes on the road so they just decided to put their own gate there and it was locked but luckily the guy came down who was the owner of the property or one of the workers of the property came down and uh, and unlocked it for me so I could get going but I was sit I just got there and I just thought okay what the F what the fuck can I do here I, I, like I thought I was completely screwed and I was going to end up getting back to the city at night but um yeah took a little bit of planning and um, and I was fine you know so try to always carry a, a physical map because there are going to be times where your, your sat nav or your google maps just, just goes offline I mean I've found that in, Ecuador is probably the worst country so far as far as uh, the roads and google maps it's just you know, and the thing is the countries and their road authorities are the ones that supply this stuff to google then go, like all their roads I mean google doesn't do it uh, or didn't doesn't do it um, doesn't drive their machines around here uh, that often and some countries don't allow them in there so sometimes they rely on other countries to provide them with the data and so I don't know whether it's the Ecuador government but they are, that I've got to say there it's a lot of things are a little bit weird here in Ecuador um, just the processes and stuff like that uh, down 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 uh, you get you get that a lot they try to stop you for money you know usually it's just kids never never feels threatening but they um, I, I actually I actually don't mind giving money to people but I'd rather give it, if I see a woman, like a young lady on the side of the road with about two or three kids, you know, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll spare a few dollars. What the fuck? I don't like it when people just flash you like that, and they do that a lot, where they flash you for no particular reason. Well, I hope no particular reason, and then you start to worry about your bike and your tyres or your gear, you know. And some of them are just doing it, oh, you know, cool, you've got a motorbike. Um, but yeah. anyway, I'm going to stop up here. But anyway, it's good talking. You got any questions or comments about long distance riding? Just uh, just mark them in the comments, and I'll, I, I mean, I get back usually within a few hours if I can. If not, um, during the day. One last thing too, if you if you're American, I highly suggest you get T-Mobile. And I'm not, a, I don't give a shit about the company. They're probably a bunch of assholes like the rest of them. But the thing about it is, with uh, with T-Mobile, you you get access I, there's not there's i think there's only been one country uh, belize maybe i can't remember who it was but there's one country where i didn't get access um out of all the countries i've been to in central and south america i got free uh free uh data uh in all those countries you know with a t-mobile you have to ask them about what plan it is i pay about 80 dollars a month 
but it's been friggin' phenomenal. Compared to like AT&T where you get nothing, you've got to pay for any data and you basically just got to switch your phone off. So it's a shout out to T-Mobile to, to and, a, and a bit of a comeuppance for AT&T is to get their act together. Um, some of these big, I mean, how easy is it? But anyway, I'm going to talk about that in another video. Alright, thanks guys.